Okay, we're going to regroup in a large circle. If everybody could find their seat. <laughs> All right, we'd like everybody to share your mission statement, please. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking with y'all. <laughs> So, um, but this is an opportunity for um, a second wave of report backs, and you can talk about any aspect of the conversation you just had, further planning, how things may have been more defined. Um, uh, maybe there was a splintering, and there's a new there's a new uh, group that's fused. I don't know. Um, so we're gonna give each group five minutes. And I'm going to hand the mic over to the first person that'd like to step up and share. Cool. Okay, I'm going to stand amongst my group because um, they'll help fill in some of the gaps. Um, okay, so continuing on our ideas about our framework um, based off of our shared values. Um, we identified a step as creating a database of existing works, models, uh, people, organizations that are doing work at the intersection of art and climate change. I'm going to take even a step before that and say that um, something that I'm interested in walking away with tomorrow is two things. One um, is, a, so we are talking about a toolkit for making, a toolkit of um, different processes or um, elements of ways of making work at these intersections. Um, so that's one thing that we together as these conveners can draft a toolkit. Um, and the second thing that I'm interested in and I shared with the group is um, individuals in this room, uh, their next steps or their ongoing projects that um, after tomorrow, uh, we as a group and as individuals can continue to support and amplify and share resources and reconnect um, knowing what's happening in the coming months and years for this group of people. Um, okay, so those three elements in our immediate or close timeline. Um, no, 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 you're, I'm looking at the... <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm in a wind tunnel, I have to get to, out. So, the residency, other, the training. Yes, okay, so um, part of um, these databases and toolkits, and I'm using these words synonymous, but also, yeah, okay, um, models. <laughs> um, spaces for sharing processes. Uh, that um, something that was brought up is um, a process of translating science, uh, the, the hard science of climate change, the social science, the politics, um, a training of how, for artists, I think, and citizens, of how to um, translate these uh, scientific modes um, into understandable vocabulary and language. Cheryl, if you have words. Uh, oh, um, taking, taking uh, you know, one possible part of a toolkit might be um, looking at developing, disseminating translation strategies from science to art, from science to story. There's usually a, a some, some artists can't just make the, the bridge on their own. And, uh, so, and there's a lot of not yet discovered po possible ways of doing that. Uh, yeah. And it's in part because the language is so specific. From fact to story, from, you know, yeah. So maybe an example would be a big part of addressing climate change is our food system. And the food system needs to uh, transform. So let's say you're setting a story, you're a playwright, you're setting a story in the future with it, that has this food system that's been transformed. They need to know what it looks like. What does that look like and how might those changes 
uh, reflect in other parts of society that we might not at first expect. Let's see, if you're dealing in a society that no longer has large-scale animal agriculture, what does that look like and how does that affect other pieces of our society? The healthcare system, for example, is, will be different. A lot of our health problems come from this heavily, our diet. And so the notion of, a, of an artist saying, well, needing to talk to somebody who says, how do you translate, okay, we've moved to a mostly plant-based food system into what does that look like in a society where I'm setting my play so I can, so I can create some elements that are going to reflect that? Does that sound like what you're talking about? We've got about one more minute. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to make two more points, and then um, if there are anything else in between there. Um, something that we discussed as important along whatever comes out of this individual group and the larger convening, whether it be residencies or workshops, uh, festivals, um, those types of spaces, is that um, there will be a process of evaluation and recording all along the way so that um, at the culmination of whatever that individual project might be, there's um, time and space for measuring and then also contributing to that database, which was on the first step of our timeline. Um, and then also, um, Rob mentioned um, an idea of mentor mentoring, which also came up earlier in the big brainstorm, um, and that um, connecting into the database um, also brings with it um, you know, connections to individuals, companies um, that can advise on um, a burgeoning project. Okay, thank you. Are we gonna? Okay, so next group. Um, we're just really struck, we're the, um, the center group, and we're just really struck by the similarities uh, between your proposals and ours. So that's, that's really exciting. You can see everybody's like shaking their heads in disbelief. Um, but we, we were um, still orbiting the idea of what our group might accomplish, and we kind of settled on this idea of a body or a location that might share knowledge in the forms of case studies, workshops, uh, environmental impact calculators, uh, strategies for eco-play analysis. Um. Database. Uh, well, and then databases of various kinds, um, workshops to um, uh, address specific issues. Um, we, uh, we, we were all very happy when we found the word broker, brokering, as uh, an activity that we would um, be, um, be involved with, which is bringing together people who uh, need each other and are looking for each other. Uh, so if there's somebody, say, from an um, animal welfare group who's looking to, uh, you know, who, who wants to create work, uh, they could come to us and we could put them in touch with a theater company that has uh, an interest in doing or a uh, record of doing that kind of work. So it's connecting, connecting people, gathering, gathering sharing, exchanging. Um, I guess one thing we talked about, we, we started moving towards trying to name the center uh, as, as a way to begin to, uh, you know, define it more clearly. And um, I, I shared with the, the group about our experience with Climate Lens. Um, uh, none of you from Climate Lens were in, my, were in this group, uh, but I spoke for us and I was talking about how, in some ways, when we came together, it was a similar intention uh, to become this, this space for sharing information about making theater at the intersection um, uh, with climate. So, um, you know, Climate Lens has done a few things and then we wondered whether there would be a way for Climate Lens to d develop itself into the center, uh, possibly by locating other uh, conceptual um, entities, uh, in other words, other groups that have formed, not theater companies, not producing organizations, but uh, more conceptual uh, resource, clearinghouse kinds of organizations. Uh, Alison mentioned one that she and Roberta, that, uh, she, yeah, um, and uh, wondered whether some of these uh, kind of, uh, you know, um, embryonic uh, uh, entities might m consider merging to become this new center. Um, and, you know, then we could think about using 
one of their names, you know, it could be the Climate Lens Center, it could be something else, depending on which, which groups get together. But then we do have milestones. Oh, sure. Um, I'm, I, I hope others will chime in too, but I think one thing that we uh, began to develop an idea of with the goal of uh, accessing the best practices, uh, knowledge that's in this room and sharing it more widely um, is curating a series where this group interviews itself. Um, so individuals would sign on to interview another individual. Um, you know, I'm looking at Ramona, maybe around 750 words. Um, thinking about uh, defining our work and, and articulating kind of our goals and challenges and, and, and victories um, and uh, publishing that series maybe as text, maybe as audio, maybe as both, but um, moving toward that as a, as a first step, maybe one that might even be incubated within HowlRound um, until we get our grants. Um, does somebody want to talk about it? we got about one minute left for the report back. I think you guys did a great job. I think the one thing that I would add is that um, the my favorite phrase from it is that our one of our three desired impacts, um, which we discussed some of last time, is growing eco-artists. And that's such a great, cool image. Well done, sir. Does anybody um, from the third group want to speak up and share what happened in our discussion? <laughs> okay. We're the amoeba group. That's good. We're the amoebas. Silence. We just let, we just, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> it was, um, it felt difficult to, I'm going to go ahead and share. It felt difficult to identify a specific action that we wanted to coalesce around. We um, came back around to this idea of divestment and what would that look like? what campaigns have been successful, which ones haven't been successful. And so there was some kind of, there was a little case study um, exploration there. Um, the question of whether or not Emerson was divested from fossil fuels came up. And I think that we were really, um, we, or I'll just say, we were thinking about civil disobedience, spectacle, nonviolent direct action, which curiously are really embodied, uh, um, less talking about the ideas and the philosophy. There was a lot of philosophy or fundamental organizing principles, but that led to what does that look like in action? And what does that look like when we um, have a goal? Um, I'm gonna say something that, I'm gonna follow up on something that you said, that, like at the very end, Peterson, which was, if we create a project, let's say a divestment campaign, that one might not be successful, but it in fact trains us. So when the next one comes along, it might in fact be successful. So that was an exciting idea that came up that even when a project gets identified that doesn't um, you know, come to fruition or isn't a success or doesn't win or something like that, that it doesn't matter that it's all part of training. Um, Specifically, that's what came to me. I'll speak for myself. Anybody else want to share? I would add that um, Joyesha shared um, a really interesting and exciting set of principles that came out of some work that she's been doing over the last year around non-extractive work around storytelling um, and community engagement. I think I just radically oversimplified that. Um, but really useful, I think, principles for thinking about how to um, be elevating the stories and empowering people to tell their own stories who are most affected by these kinds of issues. Um, and so I think that was a really useful thing that, that came out of that was just the sharing of that, um, an opportunity to continue dialoguing around that. Um, and then I think um, I and maybe some other people in that group sort of felt 
like I would be really interested in the next session of this to move in the direction of really actually talking about like nonviolent direct action, civil disobedience, and like what does that look like as performance? And so if there are other people that feel compelled to talk about that um, as we move forward tomorrow, um, maybe that's an invitation that's out there. Does anybody else from that group want to share? Oh, here you go. Um, just to lay a seed that we did not talk about is the world's largest conference of fossil free fossil fuel energy executives, lobbyists, decision makers in the world. You know, in the world happens every year in March in Houston, and every year we try to disrupt it, and nobody like we do it. But right now we're not. We don't get the support. So just in terms of a really direct place that we could do spectacle, I can tell you, I've scouted that hotel out three different times. Like we got it all. And then using one of these toolkits for how to extend the impact of that direct theatrical action through social media, uh, through creating you know, documenting it, creating films out of it, and onward to a television show, which I will get developed at Disney. Well, it's got a big impact. You know, don't diss the TV people. They all started out as playwrights. So, you know, that, that actually just flashed into my mind when you said that, uh, this notion of flash mobs or flash mob performances, these things that you watched, I've watched a hundred times, these videos of all of a sudden materializing out of the, the crowd at Grand Central Station is this dance project or this, um, you know, the statues for a while that people were just would freeze. And um, just how utterly compelling in the huge number of views those things get. And I'm, you know, picturing like at a, at a, at a meeting like this out of a, a sort of a flash performance that, I mean, these things can do so incredible. I, I don't know, that just flashed into my head and I felt like I had to share it. Yes. So we're at, we have a hard stop to get out of here. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about, we're gonna just kind of close it up, right? Jamie? Yeah, and I think, uh, yes, but before we close it up, I think uh, Chantal and Roberta and Elizabeth and I wanted to offer just a little bit more concretely, like, the support that we want to uh, offer at this point to continue th this group. We think it's important to say what we know, which might not be as much as we want to know now, but we can speak to it. So. Um, I can speak to HowlRound and say that um, we are committed to amplifying efforts <laughs> around theater and climate, performance and climate. Um, our platform is entirely open and it's based on who wants to participate. So I hope that um, as you all move forward, whatever actions come either directly out of this convening or just in your own work, that um, if you feel compelled to share what you're learning or what you're doing as a model um, with a broader community, HowlRound is like totally open to that and would love to do that. Many of you have already been able to share some things thanks to the fabulous work that Chantal has been doing curating the regular series on theater and climate change, but it does not have to fit into that regular series, right? We, we accept pitches all the time, like 98% of the content that we put out into the world is from the community. Um, you know, both in the U.S. and outside of the U.S. Um, also, uh, we live stream events all the time, and most of them we are not actually operating the cameras at. Uh, we, we stream about over 100 events a year. And what we do is provide training in how to live stream, um, marketing support through uh, putting blog posts out there and social media. And again, if you're hosting other events or producing other events or there are things that you think, man, it would be great if we could have an audience outside of this local reality that could tune into this, again, we, we can be a resource for that. Uh, we also have a burgeoning, not burgeoning, it's got like thousands of videos, but video archive that you know then is also really great in the way of like documentation right so um those are just some really clear ways that we uh, can be of service and want to be of service moving forward if it's helpful um or uh you know wanted by you all yes grisha can you use a mic where's the mic 
Thank you, Elizabeth. Do, do you document events? Do you have people pitch to you to document events and then does it happen that way or the opposite way? Do what you do you mean by document? Like SLI, to live stream. like you'll do a oh, live, live stream. stream. Yes. So, what it, so yeah, like the same process for if you wanted to write and we have a, it's all on, a, we'll follow up with links, but it's basically like a Google form and you just say, hey, I'm doing this event, here's what it looks like. And we lay out our values and you know, it's kind of a self curation process and it's a first come first serve thing um, on the calendar. We are able to live stream two things at once, not more than two things. So that's like really the, the factor. And then we'll work with you to figure out what kind of, um, you know, on tech stuff and supporting in that way. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Chantal now to speak. Sure, and um, there's the world map, right? Because, yeah, because people were talking about databases. Do you want to say a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Sorry, this is turning into like a HowlRound promo, which is not what I intended. But um, so another resource that could be of interest um, is the World Theater Map, which is um, our latest tool. It is a uh, user-generated database of like theater events, uh, theater makers, and uh, organizations all over the world. It's currently in English, Spanish, and French. And it works like Wikipedia. Anyone can add information to it. And actually, one of the, the, the idea behind this was to try and create something that could be an open tool for, uh, to help when people have conferences like this and say, if only we had a database of X. <laughs> if only we had a list of people who did Y. If only I could know who, you know, outside of my local region or even within my local region is interested in X kind of work or X topic, um, you know, wouldn't that be great? So, um, yeah, so climate change is an interest on the map. So you can search and find for people who have identified that they are interested um, either in work, uh, you know, as individuals, as organizations, and shows also that have been tagged as like, you know, having climate change as a, a thing. Oh, there's Annalisa. Hey, Annalisa. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, and because it's like Wikipedia, you can, <laughs> right? You can enter data about yourself. Um, you can also enter data for other projects or people that you may know, right? So it's entirely open and it might be, um, you know, it might also be a tool for you. It also links to HowlRound content. So if you've ever like written for HowlRound and you make a profile on the World Theater Map, it'll show up, right? Or like if you've done a live stream, it'll show up. Um, yes. And we've also published an API of this. So in the spirit of like openness, if there's ever also, like we keep hoping that somebody will um, take the code and repurpose it for something more specific, right? It's trying to do a lot of things right now, but like there's a universe where, you know, I don't know, I could imagine like 20 different ways that a map might be useful in these, in like the conversations that we're having, but one that's maybe a little bit more specific to um, what we're talking about. Okay. I also want to offer, um, I have this platform called Artists in Climate Change, which you can find at um, artistsinclimatechange.com. Uh, we do essays, interviews, a lot of essays by artists themselves. So um, one thing is after this convening, I would welcome from every one of you, you know, if you want to write about your a project or your practice, um, we like to feature artists who engage with climate change, the environment, and um, uh, we try to serve as a, a little bit of a database for featuring work and being a place where people can find us. Um, there's also a group on Facebook called Artists in Climate Change. So there's about, a th a, a, I think, close to 1,500 members right now that are from all over the world, and that's a place where we can um, exchange conversation. We can have conversation and exchange tips and, you know, whatever we may want to talk about. Um, and then I want to say, you know, I'm not, uh, unfortunately, not, I don't have a big institution behind me. Like, the Arctic Cycle is very small. But um, I am deeply invested in this intersection and in trying to, I don't want to go at it alone. So that's why that was, you know, one of the ideas for convening this. So I am really invested in what comes out of this and in helping move it forward, even though I can't, you know, I wish I could say, oh, I have the next grant for us to get together again. I don't, but I, you know, I would be um, interested in working with everybody to see how we can keep moving things forward. 
So I don't know if you have looked at the Theatre Without Borders webpage, but I know that Vijay is now looking it up. Um, and um, uh, we're a group of volunteers. It's a network of volunteers, like you're all volunteering and Chantal's volunteering. And uh, uh, it's a mechanism to connect artists globally. We've been operating for about 15 years. And um, we do have people all around the world who are, I guess, I mean, there is no membership. We're, there's no money, there's no membership, there's no desk, there's no telephone, it's just us. And um, uh, so under, if you scroll up a little bit, you can see artist safety, funding information, opportunities, and under initiatives, Vijay, if you see the little initiative thing, um, we, there's the climate lens. Um, and uh, when climate lens met, we uh, offered to have a web page. So um, it's a WordPress site, we can easily add pages. Um, uh, the thing I would say that I've kept thinking about is Theatre Without Borders uh, is basically a virtual information portal, uh, but because we're all volunteers, we come and we go, and one of the things we tend to do and have done, especially for theatre and peace building in conflict zones, is we have hosted gatherings. And it's a needs motivated response because we're volunteers. So if we feel like there's a need, then we feel we should show up. And that's why Theatre Without Borders is committed to Chantal and Elizabeth. And um, uh, we did do in 2010 at La Mama uh, a huge conference on theater and peace building in conflict zones. 400 people attended from over 40 countries. We have no money. So we did a $500,000 <laughs> uh, conference for zero. We passed the hat. I've been thinking, and with talking to Chantal and to talking to Elizabeth, we just have to do one again, and it has to be about this topic. So it's in my mind, if that's important to people, that would be important to me slash us. Uh, so there are resources. If you, if you tell us, we will come. <laughs> I want to second um, a lot of what was said, and I also want to stand in my commitment to organizing subsequent convenings. Um, and we're going to take the temperature, I think, again tomorrow and find out how many people in this room feel like that would be important or desired, and just to kind of figure out how that might gel. I also am located in Miami and in Brazil, and I am, Miami is um, on the Florida Peninsula, and it's a place that a lot of people don't get to, and it's um, it's an independent republic on its own, and it's uh, it really sits in a space of the Caribbean. So I think it, it's it's uh, I, I I just am representing um, that area of this of our. Uh, it's a bio a very interesting and important bioregion, and it's connected. It's also a shore of, like Brazil is one shore of that same Caribbean, um, as are other cities around the Gulf Coast. So I just I think it's an interesting nexus and. I'm just there, um, and you can come visit me anytime you want. Thank you. Okay.